Welcome to Healthy University, where we'll discuss issues and subjects on how you can live a healthier and more productive life. And now, here's your host for Healthy University, Alan Eisenberg. Hi, and welcome to Healthy U. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. In fact, uh, I got home and I was fully expecting to have to do some work on my computer and do other things, and my wife said, let's go take a walk and then get dinner and then uh, just walk back, which was a couple of miles. And, you know, it was really enjoyable, and it really does make me happy to take those walks. And happiness is one of those things that I know I struggled with. I know a lot of people struggle with. So my guest today deals a lot with that and helps to help you, I think, find paths to your happiness. Um, My guest today is Joe Rabb. He's a speaker and coach and is the founder of BeDoGetMore.com and the creator of More Happiness and Up For More. Joe works with passionate people with big, bold ideas who want to reinvent their lives Through a process of exploration and planning, Joe leads his clients from stuck adults to revolutionary results. So welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. So so tell me, how how did you land on becoming a happiness coach? How did you discover that that was the thing, the passion that you had that you wanted to do? Yeah, I've always been a happy guy, and people have always said that about me. But I was in the corporate world, and I just felt stuck. I felt like I was doing the same thing every day, over and over. And I I knew something had to change, but I wasn't sure what. And then I started getting really bad anxiety to the point where I was actually shaking in my doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they prescribed some medicine. That didn't work. It actually made everything worse. And so then we messed around with other medicines. But then one day, um, when I was feeling particularly down, I was actually on a bus here in Chicago. And I figured I was going to have to make a change for myself. And so I chose right there that I was going to be happy and I was going to figure out what I need to do to get back to that happy self that I was. And so that one day, it just, everything changed. I chose to be happy and I just went forward moving with that. That's funny. That's very similar to me. I think there was a, unfortunately, I'm probably still in the corporate world or fortunately, I guess. I don't know. Depends how you look at it. But uh, certainly dealt with the anxiety, dealt with feeling I, you know, there was, I, I remember a point in my life where I, I was talking to a mentor and I said, I'm never happy. And, and the thing that he said to me, you know, struck me really deeply. He goes, never do you expect to be happy all the time? And I said, well, you know, it'd be nice to be happier. And he said, well, happiness is fleeting. Like sadness is fleeting. Right. And so you can't have happiness without sadness. It's a, it's a balance game. And, and it made me really think like, Hmm, maybe my expectation of happiness is too high. Maybe, you know, that that middle ground is really sort of the area that we're at most of the time, but that we have to find ways to be happy. So so how do we achieve happiness? How do we go on the lookout and figure out what does make us happy? Well, I always say there's three steps to happiness. First I believe you need to figure out your own definition for happiness. And and just going off what you were just saying, I mean, we kind of need to feel the bad to know what the good feels like. So that's the same with happiness and sadness. I mean, you need to know what, how you feel about each end of the spectrum. So that's the first step, figure out your own definition of happiness. Then my second step, which was the, the aha moment for me is you need to choose happiness. Um, allow it to come into your life. Allow yourself to accept it and acknowledge it. And so, I mean, that everything about life really is about choice. And choosing how to react to things, even if they might seem negative, is um, a big step towards happiness. So the first step, figure out your own definition. Second, choose happiness. And third, spread happiness. Uh, this one really came into, I guess, into my life, into my clarity when I had my one-year-old son, uh, when he was born, and watching him explore the world, and, I mean, 
happiness and emotions and everything that you experience through that child's eyes, how they see something for the first time where you might have seen it, you've seen it every day for the past, I don't know, 15 years and they see it for the first time and it kind of opens up um, more possibilities and you start re re seeing things in a way that you haven't in years. So, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to achieve happiness. Uh, define it yourself, choose to be happy, and then spread happiness. Yeah, I always think it's interesting now how, you know, there's the adult coloring books and, and there's all this talk about adults having playtime, you know. We, we, exactly. forget, we forget. We forget what it was like to have those imaginations, those those things that did make us so happy as children. Hopefully many of us had happy childhoods. Um, I know I had rough times in it, but I know when I was in play, when I, you know, when we're in play or when we're very early on, it, it, it's, you notice that. I mean, you, sure, children get upset, but what they're getting upset about is not uh, really emotional things. It's usually physical things like they're hungry or they're tired or, or all of these things. And, exactly. and they haven't built up this emotional wall of, of unhappiness that, that we tend to build. And also, I think, for me, it's those expectations. So, again, that, that set up for yourself that you wake up in the morning and you say, okay, you know, if this goes wrong today, that's just going to ruin everything. You know, it's, it's those words like everything, always all the time, never, you know, and that really kill you because to me, it really is a balance. You know, it really is that a balance in life that you, you can choose happiness, but you have to allow for sadness and you have to allow for recovery and you have to allow these moments in order to have that happiness. So you can't get defeated around those moments because then you can't readjust back to happiness and go, well, wow, you know, life isn't like it was during that down period. So how, how do you suggest with your clients and how do you work on those setbacks or sad times in order to, to have that bounce back? Yeah, I, I mean, that's something that comes up a lot. And especially with my clients, I usually take people that were in similar situations to me where I was stuck and I, I knew I wanted something more or um, the other subset of my clients are people who have are coming over something very negative and they're through it and they know they want to move to the next level. So that's kind of how I get clients are actually most of the time referred from other coaches who have coached people through this problem. And then I'm taking them, you know, your life has gotten a lot better. Let's really amp it up. But if somebody that I'm coaching is going through some setback or sad times, I say there's five A's to really getting through it. So first acknowledge your sadness, know that it's there and kind of acknowledge where it's coming from. Then you would have to accept it. Accept that it is sadness and that's exactly what it is. It's just a emotion that you have in your, I guess, toolbox, we'll say. Uh, then I would move on to arrange. Like, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to hold on to the sadness? Do you want to learn something from it? Do you maybe want to store it somewhere that you can access later? Because there might be some benefits to that sadness you have. And then next, I, I ask you to make a decision, abandon it, remove it, get rid of it. Um, it's it served its purpose. Now move on. And then that leads you to the last day, which is allow. Allow yourself to move on past this and look for new opportunities. So th that's how I, I kind of think you overcome setback or move through sad times is acknowledge, accept, arrange, abandon, and then allow yourself to move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 one of the one of the things that that I always say for you know we're both coaches, so I, I know we both have probably techniques that uh, we use, but that that we're not on a journey in life; we're on many journeys, and each one has a beginning, middle, and end. And almost like you're saying, it's like you got to let it go. You know, you have to say, what did I learn from that? What did I? What was the lesson? 
and then take that with you to the next thing, but not make it all a constant part of your story. You know, that that's it. My story is this, this bad time really happened and I, I can't get past it. And unfortunately there are a lot of people like that. You know, I think there's a lot of people who just struggle to find the good in life to, to, to say, you know, that they're, they have fortune and that they have things that are not necessarily, um, easy for them to identify in themselves. Do you find that? Do you find that people really struggle with their own self-happiness, that they're looking to the outer world, which is another thing I think is a terrible mistake in my opinion. You know, you you have to find happiness within, not without. Yeah, I mean, of course there will be some things outside of you that will make you happy. But, I mean, you need to find that happiness within. Um, I, I think too many times we're our worst critic and... I think we need to be, on the opposite side, our best cheerleader, uh, telling ourselves that, you know, we can get through this. Um, today's going to be a happy day. Um, if something comes up and I'm having some issues, I'll be able to work through them and learn the lessons. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes we also have to take into account, in, from from my perspective, a little bit of that there are physical things you can take care of in your life. You can treat your, your body better. You can treat your mind better in order for it to help you think more happy thoughts. So like, you know, I, very similar to you, I went through a, you know, a time of anxiety and, and a little depression and, and things like that. And one of the, you know, one of the recommendations, of course, is always, well, do something physical, get some physical exercise, or like I was saying at the beginning, you know, even a walk in nature and, and something where you're getting those, what we now know are endorphins, right, that, that feed, your, feed your hungry brain positive energy. Um, and so that can come from food, right, either your gut serotonin, Produces serotonin. Serotonin is that happy? Is it a happy drug? So when we're we're talking about people taking drugs for depression or anything, their serotonin receptors—that's what they're trying to to shoot off. And, and so doing things for yourself that lead to happiness. And everybody's different. I'm not saying like, oh, go out and exercise. I, I hated to exercise until I really found enjoyment in it because of the result. And so now I find it an enjoyable experience because of what's coming after, which is that happiness. So, so how do you encourage your, your clients or people to find the things maybe they've never found or the things that they think they don't like, that that will help them? I, I say try out as much as you can. I always try to do new things. Um, you know, one time actually, my business coach that I have, she actually told me uh, one day when I was feeling a little bit uh, weary about what I was going to execute in my business, and she said, you know, get it out of your mind. Uh, don't just think about it the whole time. And her suggestion was to take a cold shower or go jump on a trampoline. <laughs> and I was like, those are completely different, but I got it. It'll clear my mind of what I'm thinking. So, yeah, I mean, I just think you have to try new things. And, and, like I said before, my one-year-old son, we're trying new things every day. So yep. uh, he's definitely keeping me on my toes. In fact, he's upstairs, and I think he's finishing a bottle, so we might hear him. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been there and done that. Mine, mine are a little older now, uh, 19 and 23, so... They don't want the bottle as much. They just want my money. But it's it's about the same. Um, but it is. I mean, I think children by, by nature, and it's one of those things that's another, I think it's a chemical reaction within us, you know, that, that we can't help but be happy with children. Like when children laugh, we laugh. And, you know, it, it's, it's like I say, you go to a comedy at the movies, right? And, and you laugh because the audience is laughing, but then you watch it at home and, Boy, that wasn't as funny. So there really is a, a, a contagion, you know, a contagious reaction. And and one of the things you said that struck me that that I feel is important as well is that you have to give to get. And it's it's another important lesson in in relationships, even in in 
you know, loving relationships and, and spousal relationships that if you expect, if you're going through a rough patch and you expect your spouse to all of a sudden turn around, if you're not working to get that, if you're not giving compliments to your spouse and, you know, not arguing and or, or finding better ways to argue and working at it, you're not going to have success, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so how do, you know, how do people kind of learn to stop the negative thought in their head? How do you think that, that that happens? Well, I'm a big believer of affirmations. So I am statements that are positive. So I'm going to give this amazing speech today. I've practiced it. Um, I visualize myself going through it and I'm going to get a standing ovation. Uh, so affirmations are always good to put you in that right state of mind. I'm also huge with quotations. I mm -hmm. love quotations. You'll see them all over. I post them on uh, social media, have them hanging up. Like I have one right next to me right now that says, live simply, give more, expect less. So that's right next to me. And then I, I see another one. Every wall is a door. So motivate yourself. Um, and through that motivation, I think you can step forward into more happiness. Yeah. And I think that's very true. And there's, you know, great ones out there. You can buy them online or you can go to, uh, there's a place called Kirkland's around me that always has them. And, oh, yeah. and I keep, you know, I keep them at my desk at work. And, and I think my, my two favorites, I have a just for today and it has a whole bunch of things on it just for today. And then uh, there's a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt about, you know, letting go of the past and, and, and not thinking about the future and just living in, in, in the present, you know, and the present is a gift, right? You know, so the, the allegory of a gift, um, and I love, I love to always look at that. I, I, I think, you know, and, and, and I love affirmation sites. You can go to so many, there, there's many of them and there's many bloggers who use affirmation, uh, pictures and, and really great stuff like that. I, I think, reading it and feeling it and 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 again some sometimes journaling it yourself you know tell yourself one of the things that that I practice is is try to find three good things that happened every day now sometimes those good things are just waking up in the morning and realizing i have a life you know i'm alive and sometimes it's very deep like something good happened like getting an award or doing a good job but reminding yourself that even when you when you have a bad day, there are good things in it, to me, is very important. So we have to take a quick break. But when we come back, I'd like to, to go a little deeper into um, how do we sustain happiness and, and maybe a little more about uh, that thing I call contentment. Uh, so if you'll stay with us, Joe, we'll be right back with more Healthy You. Sounds great. You're listening to Healthy University with Alan Eisenberg. Hi, and welcome back to Healthy You. I'm here with Joe Rabb, and he is a uh, happiness coach and the founder of BeDoGetMore.com. And Joe and I were just talking about different techniques and different things about happiness. But Joe, I, wanna, I wanted to go a little deep now um, with the one thing that I think really holds a lot of us back personally about thinking we should be happier. You know, this idea that gee, my life, should, I should feel happier. So, like, to me, I had that moment where it was like, I, I don't feel happy. 
And it was the wrong statement. The statement was really, you know, do you, do you feel like you're, to me, it was really, well, do you feel content? You know, do you find contentment in life, which is that middle ground? Uh, so do you have enough happiness and do you have enough sadness? Is it a balance? Of course, you know, we go back to the yin-yang idea. But I like to call that contentment. And I find contentment in my life to be a good reflection time because it's usually those little journeys I was talking about. Was there a beginning, middle, and end that got me through that part? And then, you know, the next journey could be the hap- a happiness journey. Um, how, how do you feel about that? What do you think about the idea that, that really we, we live, contentment is really that middle ground that we have to find satisfaction at and, and set the expectation for happiness to be less, I should be happy, more of a surprise as life continues to not have that expectation. Yeah, it, it really is about finding the middle ground on everything, but I mean, just like life balance, uh, just like happiness, a uh, life balance, I mean, you need to define it for yourself. Um, in, in my practice, I sometimes do this exercise uh, called the Wheel of Life, where people rank the different areas of their life, and then uh, they connect the dots, and then if it was actually a wheel, it would be quite a bumpy ride. But it doesn't have to be a complete circle where everything is in balance because what balance looks like for one person might be painful for another. And so it's just really about finding that balance that works for you. Um, you know, I don't like to do housework, so I'm not going to put a lot of effort into making that a happy place for me. Mm-hmm. But then... I, I love doing other things, so I'm going to spend more time that way. Right. And and kind of going back to that thing I was saying before is sometimes, so for for me, you know, one of the, the lessons has been, okay, I'm sort of the same way. I don't, I don't necessarily want to do housework or, you know, with, with my wife and I, we all have our, our little things. It's the coffee at night, right? You know, it's making coffee and setting it up. And I wasn't doing it. And then when I started doing it, she started sort of giving me something I needed, like thanking me and saying, oh, that was so nice. And then maybe she was doing a couple of things that she didn't want to do, but she knew I didn't want to do either. Yeah. I think that's I think that's another part of it. Right. Is that we we have to sometimes do the things that we think we don't like to do, particularly in relationships, in order to get what we want in happiness that we want this other person to do that we we're not necessarily getting. Yeah. And so, and so relationships, I I think sometimes are like that. So, so going back, you were talking about quotations and, and I think we both agree how powerful they are. What, what is your favorite quotation on happiness and, and why is it your favorite? Why is, why is that the one you're attracted to? Okay. It's, by an anonymous person or author unknown, I guess you could say, but uh, I found it when I was in college, and I, I'm not sure how it appeared, where it came from, but I just really, it, it, it struck me, and uh, it's something that I think about all the time, but here it is, today is a gift, why else would it be called the present? Mm-hmm. So that's my favorite, I mean, it, it just... It reminds me to be happy that I'm just around and experiencing life. Uh, I mean, every day is a present. It's a gift. So uh, that definitely has resonated with me through the years. And I think, yeah, that's that's very similar to that Eleanor Roosevelt quote I was saying before, which is, you know, it, hers is more rhymy, but it's like uh, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, and that's why it's called the present, right? So very much in line with that. And I, that sits at my desk and it just reminds me that, you know, you can't do anything about what, what just happened or what's happened. Can't change it. You know, I've, I've, I've made my mistakes in life. We all have. And you know, hopefully you learn from them. That's, you know, what I, what I always tell people. And then you can't predict tomorrow. You know, you can't do it. There's just no, I always tell people, I say, you tell me what's on my mind right now. Yeah. <laughs> I do this as a coach. And they're like, uh, I did this, and I'm like, no, it's not that. Come on, what, what else? 
you know, and we could do that for five, ten minutes, and then, then uh, you know, it's like you're not going to get it. You're, you can't read a mind. So you can't read that someone feels this way. And then almost like that balance thing I was saying is like all the things that, and, and you probably run into this too sort of as, as a, a happiness person or as me who's turned this thing and, you know, believes very much in mindfulness and some, some uh, Eastern philosophical ideas um, and, and, and meditation, yoga, and, and exercise and benefits of that. As many people as think that I'm right on that will be equally think I'm wrong. And you, you have to accept you have to accept that. You have to accept it's kinda of like what what happens on Facebook right now or the internet. It's like you gotta accept that that some people feel a certain way and you're not gonna change their mind and you can't you gotta let it go. <laughs> you gotta you can't, yeah. can't can't have a fight with someone that you're you know, it's not there's not gonna be a winner or a loser. You know, it, it just doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that it reminds me of a RuPaul quotation. Whatever anybody thinks about me is none of my business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, and it, and it's easy to say, hard to do. We all know that. I mean, these are these are things. I, I I think as we get older, I know as I get older, I'm less concerned. You know, I, I it's kind of like you know, as as a father, it's like once you have kids, you know, you're sort of what your problems become minimalistic compared to what you have to do and, and how you raise your family and how you take care of your children or hopefully they are, you know, exactly. in, yep. a, in an unselfish way. You always, I always jokingly tell people that, you know, when I got married, I gave up 50% of my life, my life. And when I got kids, I gave up a hundred percent. So that's 150. So I'm 50 down right now, you know, but <laughs> I'm working my way back up now that my kids are out of the house. But, but you know that's that's life. That's yeah. what you do, and 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 you know the, the hard part now for me is really adjusting back to what do I like to do? I like to do these podcasts, so that's sort of that's sort of what I do. You know, these are what things make me happy. Um, but what do you say to someone who who's saying I'm stuck doing the same thing every day? So I'm I'm unhappy at work. Maybe I'm unhappy in my relationship. How do I? make that move, switch it up and, and live the life I want. How do you, how do you approach that? Well, I think start making goals, write them down and just kind of start doing stuff differently. Um, I had a CEO in a company I used to work for who said, you need to look for the boo job, boo job day. So that's a concept. Um, everyone's familiar with deja vu, where uh, you experience something and you felt like you've done it before or you've experienced it before. So that's kind of like life. If you feel like you're stuck, you're having deja vu. It's the same thing over and over again. Uh, the concept of rouge day is pausing to really look at what you're doing consistently and notice the differences. So if you go into the same cubicle every day at work, Notice if there's any differences. Have you really not looked at this one area? Or do you have a picture hanging up that you haven't looked at in a long time? It's really about switching up your mind and starting to see the small differences. And then also implementing small differences into your life so that you can start seeing things. And I mean, another thing that I always encourage is for everyone, everyone should get a life coach for sure. Mm, have that yeah. person holding you accountable. If you say you want change and you've been saying that for a long time and nothing has really um, been sustainable, I say get, get a life coach, get a, a success coach. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of different coaches out there, and I'm sure there's one perfect for you. Mm. Um, I mean, having a coach has gotten me through a lot, and mm -hmm. I don't know where I would be without my many coaches that I've had. And, and it's funny because, you know, we, we coaches are like mentors, I always say, you know, and, and mentors do these things, coaches do these. But, but the one interesting thing that I, I always say, it doesn't matter if you're a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or a coach, or anybody working in any of this, there, there's nobody to tell you how to get, how you're going to approach getting better. We can only listen, offer suggestion, and advise, but it's your life, you know, ultimately, it's like you said, you know, if you, if you're, if you're, you have to do the work, you know, there is no work that someone else can do for you. 
to make it happen. And I, I think that's so important is that if you want to be happier, you can be happier, uh, in my opinion. But you, it, it's work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be putting in the work. Yeah. And I also uh, do at least one thing to achieve your goals every day. Yeah. And what is, you know, on achieving your goals and, and, you know, again, goal setting, that's another thing I think people struggle with. And I think that's where you're right. You know, having a life coach, having somebody hold you accountable is so important. But, you know, how do you achieve a life balance? Like, how do you how do you move into that area? Um, I know you've talked about life balance a lot. And and how, how do you, what, first of all, how do you define like a life balance and, how, and then how do you move toward that achievement life balance for me my definition is doing the things that i want um and handling the stuff that i don't so as i said earlier i don't like doing housework so um i have a maid come every other week and she cleans up the house for us and that's one thing we don't have to worry about uh but I say once you kind of start to feel what life balance is for you, and it might take a while to actually figure that out. Um, as I said earlier, the Wheel of Life activity, I always say do a quarterly or even a monthly check-in. Do that Wheel of Life again, reevaluate how everything is, and keep doing that until you can de- define balance for yourself. I mean, balance is personal and unique to each individual. Uh, I mean... What might be satisfying to me may be boring to you. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, that's really what you need to do. That's what I think life balance is. Yeah, and I also think it changes. the other The other thing that I've I've tried to think about with with some people I've I have some friends who have had strokes, and you know, so they lose they lose some mobility, and they really get very down and defeated, which which I, I would imagine is is typical. But I say, yeah. Uh, you have to write your new life now. You know, you have to say, okay, this is where my life is today. You know, we're, we're all going to get older. We all are going to experience things. Uh, and even young people have. I mean, I've worked with young people with disabilities, and, and they don't think they're disabled. They, they think they're enabled. Um, you know, they just find different and new ways to do things. And I think for me, that was when when I when I worked with them, I, I was the one who learned everything, you know, versus them. Uh, they were the teachers. So, so what, what habits have you, have you changed to live a happier and healthier life? What, what things do you do on a regular basis? Well, meditation has definitely helped. Um, I I try to fit in at least 15 minutes every day. Uh, I also listen to very inspirational music. Um, but my inspirational music is a, a, a little bit different than any, <laughs> what most people would consider inspirational music. I actually have uh, Pandora as a radio app, mm-hmm. and the station is minimal techno. So it's <laughs> it's not hard-beating techno, but has a nice, happy, uplifting beat. And so uh, when I'm commuting or um, going anywhere on public transportation here in the city, I always have that on. It helps, you know, keep me happy. My uh, it, And it's also inspirational. Uh, that's when I kind of do most of my deep thinking and come up with ideas about fun things I want to do with my life or with my business. So, yeah, those are two things that I've done. Also, um, I, I say at least one positive affirmation before I get out of bed. Mm-hmm. So I wake up, I, I say something great to start my day off, and when I really put that into practice, it was it was life changing. Yeah, it really is. And and I talk about music a lot. It's it's funny. I know not everybody is affected by music, but but music to me is is affects me greatly. And and you know I've I've since discovered and and I would imagine you you might be in this spectrum as well. Is I'm a highly sensitive person, 
You know, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, most of us coaches or, or ther- therapists amazingly are, but, but, um, it, it's very interesting. So, so music touches me, music probably touches you, you know, so you, you get that, they talk about goosebumps, you know, like I, I'll get goosebumps when I hear an old song I haven't heard for a long time. You know, I, when I went to see guardians of the galaxy and for me, they were playing all those old seventies tunes that I really liked as a kid. And it was oh, like, fun. it was like, you know, it was like, it, it just made the whole, the whole movie is just that much more fun to me. And I enjoyed it so much. And of course, I, I then immediately downloaded the music. And when I go to the gym, I listen to music, which is, again, kind of getting a double a double whammy of happiness. Um, so I agree. I mean, I think I think those are the kinds of things. It, it's that simple, you know, the music that you like, the music that makes you feel energized and good. And again, I don't want to go into studies, but but. But there's musicology in college, and, and they talk about these things. You know, it's, your emotions can easily be influenced by music, um, and they they've proven that with babies all the way up to adults. So, so it's yeah, interesting. I believe in that so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how can people reach you and learn more about what you do, and and how they could, I, I guess, get your services and and learn to live a happier life. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, they can go over to my website, which is BeDoGetMore.com. Um, I actually just published a new ebook, and if they wanted to grab that, uh, it, it, it's on my website as well, BeDoGetMore.com uh, backslash emotions. Um, also, if anybody has any questions or anything, there's a, a box down at the bottom that they can uh, send a question directly to me. And if anybody is in the Chicago area um, on December 9th, I'm going to be hosting a day-long workshop, actually all about life balance and achieving goals. So if you're interested in that, I haven't uh, launched the website for it yet, but if you're interested, go ahead and type in that box at the bottom of the website, and I'll get that information to you. Well, great, Joe, and thanks for being on the show today. I really enjoyed talking to you about happiness. I think it's something, sometimes this show can be a bit of a, I don't want to say downer, but we talk about some heavy subjects, so it was nice nice to kind of talk about that there is there is a way to happiness and that there are people like you out there who are helping people achieve that and find that in themselves. So thanks for being on Healthy You. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And this is Alan Eisenberg with Healthy You, and I hope you'll join us next time. Thank you for listening to Healthy University, brought to you by Bullying Recovery, LLC. This podcast does not replace the need for medical advice, professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or any other individual. The information provided here or through linkages to other sites is not a substitute for medical or professional care, and you should not use the information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other health care provider. Join us next time for more Healthy University.